Give the Lord a hand of praise. Come on, somebody begin to, no, no, no. Come on, we're going to praise him tonight. He is worthy. He is worthy. There's no one like him. There is no God beside you. We exalt you in this room tonight. Come on, you can do better than that. I'm talking about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the God who is more than enough, the God who can meet every need that's in this room. I don't know what you came in here needing, but God can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we're able to ask or even think. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Just don't get comfortable. Just don't get comfortable. I'm one of those preachers that like feedback. Right? So when, when the Holy Spirit hits you and some, a word hits your spirit, an amen goes a long way. Just pull on that anointing. I have a couple of announcements uh, to make before I get into the word tonight. Is everybody excited to be here? I'm excited to be in the house of God. I feel like I've just been living in the house of God. I mean, I have been on the road here and there, and so it's been like every night I've been somewhere. So I'm glad to be here in Cleveland tonight. I'm expecting, I'm expecting. I wanted to make a quick announcement. Back at the tape table back there, I have my book, The Triple Threat Anointing. If you don't have this, this one's a little older. If you don't have this one yet, this comes from an encounter that I had with Jesus, and he showed me a glimpse of the coming move of God that is coming, and it's even happening right now. So you want to go get that book, but this is the one, the first time that's here. It's not in the bookstore yet. Well, whoever's over the bookstore will get that in the bookstore, but it is called Breaking the Spirit of Delilah, Accessing God's Power to Topple Ancient Strongholds. This just came out, y'all. And Brother Perry Stone wrote the foreword for it. And I am so excited about this book. So you guys have to go get it. It sells in the bookstore for $19.99 is what it says on the back. But we're going to do tonight $15 for one. Or you can get both of them for $25. My wife is a bargain shopper. So she loves good bargains. So make sure and stop by the product table and get that book. Thank you, guys. Thank you. You guys did awesome. Well, I have a word from the Lord for you guys tonight. But before we get started, let's just uh, invite. I know we already have and he's already here, but let's just pray. Lord, I thank you for what you're about to do. I thank you for what you're already doing. I thank you that you are moving on the hearts and the lives of people. I thank you for putting a watch on my mouth and a guard on my tongue that I may speak as an oracle of God. I thank you for giving the people hearing ears that they can hear what thus saith the Lord. God, we not want nothing more, nothing less than what you want to say tonight. I thank you. I yield myself to you. And I say, Lord, let your glory be made manifest in this room tonight. Tonight, bondages break. Tonight, chains are broken. Tonight, lives are set free. I declare that we will never be the same after tonight. In Jesus' name, I believe you, Father. Come on, somebody say amen. Well, I'm excited about what God is doing on the earth. We have been seeing revival. I know you guys have been seeing revival. And, and you know, one of the things that got, uh, that just stirred me up is when revival began to break out at Asbury, at Lee University, different, different spots in the, in the nation. And I said, God, we don't want to be left out. 
Y'all want to, we don't want to be left out. And I said, if you can do it there. And you know, it began to stir hunger. It began to stir thirst. I know in our church, it began to stir hunger. We have some of the Ramp Church uh, Chattanooga people here tonight. I know it's begun to, it's, it's stirred. If God can move there, he can move here. If God can move there, he can move here tonight. If God can heal, he can still heal. I don't know what you're waiting for. I, I don't know. I know some people say, well, I've got to wait till a big name speaker comes and lays hands on me. I'm telling you, I would rather have the Holy Ghost lay hands on me anytime. I believe that some of you are going to receive a miracle tonight. I, I don't know what you came in here needing, but I heard the Holy Spirit say that there is healing in this room. No, I'm not just saying that to hype you up. I heard the Spirit of the Lord as I walked through those doors. I heard the Holy Spirit say that there is a miracle working anointing that's in this room tonight. See, some of you need to press into it. You say, well, I, I don't know what I'm doing. Some of you need to believe the word of the Lord. And, and I'm not preaching on this tonight, but I want to release this word before I get started. Because somebody came in here needing a miracle. But I heard the Holy Spirit as I was walking in. And he began to speak to me and say it's like the woman who had an issue of blood for 12 long years and she said enough's enough she heard that Jesus was passing by See, some of you are here tonight, you thought it was by mistake, or you thought it was by coincidence, or maybe you were just being faithful. No, you came for a divine appointment. She heard that Jesus was passing by, and the word said that she pressed through the crowd. She pressed through every hindrance. She pressed through everything that was keeping her out. Some of you have got to press, because when you touch Jesus, that virtue is going to... I just, I just sense the Holy Ghost right there. There is some virtue beginning to flow in this house tonight. If you came in here with an impossible situation, get ready because the miracle worker is here. It's not about a church. It's not about a speaker. It's not about anything other than Jesus Christ. Y'all better get ready tonight. I, I, I told my church one day, I said, I want to get uh, shockers on my chair. So when on the chairs in this, the church, so that when uh, I can just release an electric volt. Now, before you write me saying, no, you shouldn't work all that. No, we have emotions. And so we're moved by emotions when the Holy Spirit moves. And some of y'all that aren't, I'm going to get some shock. No, just kidding. I, 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 te I tease with my church like that. I'm like, if you don't, if you don't, if you don't press in, then we're, guess what? We'll, we'll move you in the natural. No, just kidding. <laughs> it's all right to be a little bit light in, in, in the service because believe me, I'm intense. If y'all don't know me, I'm intense 99% of the time. <laughs> So we got to have that moment. But I want to release this word before we get into the scripture that uh, the Lord has given me for tonight. But he said to me to come to prophesy. There has been a demonic haze that has tried to cloud the church in this generation. He said the enemy has literally been lullabying the church to sleep while he runs rampant throughout the earth. Possessing territory that God has given to us. You know, one thing about, I don't know if y'all are like this, but when my alarm goes off in the morning, the first thing I want to do is push snooze. I'm just going to, that's why I said it early. Because I, I, I know I'm going to do that. So I, I said it early. So I go through two snoozes and then I know it's really time you got to get up. And so when that alarm is going off, it's annoying. In fact, I have the most annoying ringtone on my phone because I want it to wake me up. So it's really annoying. 
See, whenever you come into a place or you come into a generation and you're dealing with sleepers, when immediately when uh, uh, Ramp Cleveland or, or the Ramp in Hamilton or, or, or the Ramp in Chattanooga begins to sound a prophetic trumpet of saying it's time to wake up, the sleepers get annoyed. But in this generation, we don't have time to appease the sleepers. We don't have time to pacify them and say, oh, you don't like this message okay I'll get you something you like I'll get you three points and a poem and maybe you'll like that we don't have time for that why because the hour is at hand and there has been a demonic haze over a generation and we played patty cake with the enemy for too long but I hear the Lord saying it's time for some real voices to begin to rise up and say the hour is now the time is now wake up from your slumber we rebuke the sin be set free in the name of Jesus see we don't have the the luxury of playing church anymore I don't know about y'all but I'm so tired of the gimmicky entertainment driven production and don't get me wrong, I love nice lights, I love song, uh, I love good sound, good music. I'm not against any of that. I love it. But if it becomes a replacement for the presence of God, you're in danger. When you think you've got more to offer than what God has to offer, you're in danger. See, what you don't understand is you can be a sleeper and not even know it. We have too many sleeper agents in the church today. We have too many people that are asleep and they don't even know it. Why? Because they go to church. Why? Because they shout when they're supposed to shout. Why? Because they lift their hands when they're supposed to lift their hands. But yet they're not hearing the clear call of the Spirit. We are not hearing the message of awakening. We are not hearing this is our finest hour. I know it's evil out there. I was talking with someone the other day and they said, Andrew, it, it's so bad out. It's just so evil. And can you believe that such and such did this? And I said, yes, I believe it. I said, they're the world. The world is the world. Why are we surprised when they don't put on their church face and they're acting like the world? That's why the light of Jesus has to shine brighter through us. That's why we can't laugh at the same jokes. That's why we can't go to the, I know this is some old time preaching right now, and I'm not even that old, but I, I, I got to lay down some foundational truths tonight, and I know you know them, but I, I believe in this generation that we have kind of skimmed over those so that we can preach just the grace, just grace, 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 and I'm not, a, believe me, I'm not against the grace of God, because we all need it, but if we skip over, and, and we got to get back to living holy we got to get back to seeking after God I, I didn't plan to go there here but the Holy Spirit planned to go here and, and, and see this might be out of fashion or out of style and I don't even care because I tried I, I tried to fit in for a little while see I remember when I first started preaching uh, I was ministering. I mean, I was so on fire like I am still on fire. Thank God, don't ever take the fire. So I stoke it in Jesus' name. But I remember an old pastor sent me down and, 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 and brought me in their office and gave me a list of 50 things that I did wrong. And one of them was I was too loud, I moved too much, and I sweat too much. And they said, you know, just give you a little while. You're still young, but give you a little while. That fire that you, it'll settle down. Go through a few things, and that fire will get a little less radical. And I remember thinking to myself as I left the office, I said, if that happens to me, then I want to quit that day. 
I don't want to do this for a living. I don't want to do this for a job. I don't want to do this for a career. I'm sent on assignment. And I want the same fire that I feel in my prayer room to begin to flow in the altars. I want it to begin to flow when I take a microphone. I want the same fire. See, the problem is we have too many people trying to imitate the fire of God. And they have empty prayer rooms, empty prayer time. And that's why we don't see the fire of God anymore. See, I'm going to help some people tonight. You want the fire of God to flow in your church? Pastors, watching online, you want the fire of God? Begin to spend time in prayer because every move of God is birthed by prayer. Every move of God is sustained by prayer. We can't say that enough. We need prayer back in the church. The bride of Christ needs to begin to pray like never before. These days are evil. We better begin to seek the heart and the face of God. We declare right now in Cleveland, Tennessee, God we want you. God, we need you. God, we're desperate for you. We don't want hype. I don't want excite. I don't, I don't want to play patty cake with the enemy. I want the fire of the Holy Spirit to where I can't sleep at night. Now, I'm just going to be real with you last night going to lose this for a minute. Y'all saw me. I, I, I wore a sport coat for you tonight. Thank you. But I was sleeping last night, and about 3 a.m., I, I saw two demons that walked in my room. Now, before you write me and say that you can't see that, and my house is a temple of the Holy Spirit, but it was a, a demonic spirit, two demonic spirits came in and the, the Lord spoke to me and said, Andrew, get up and take authority over this. I said, Lord, how are they in my house? Come on, we converse, we converse like this. We talk like this. I said, Lord, how are they in my house? This is, this is your house. This is your sanctuary. We don't do things that are unholy in my house. And the Lord said, there's demonic warfare that is raging in this hour. And there's demonic entities. He said, Andrew, I want you to get up and I want you to go to the front door. And he said, I want you to open the front door. It was cold last night. How many of y'all know it was cold last night? And I, I was thinking, I was really tired. And I said to myself, Lord, can I just rebuke him from my bed? And I was, I was saying, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I take authority over there. And he said, I told you, I want you to get up and go to the front door, open the front door, and tell every spirit that's not the Holy Spirit to get out of your house, that this house is covered by the blood of Jesus. And so I was obedient, and when I did, the presence of God began to flood my home, and he said, okay, now it's time for me and you to commune together. I said, God, I'm tired, but if you have something for me, I want to hear your voice. I want to hear what I've never heard before. In fact, I had another message for tonight, and the Holy Spirit changed it because I believe there's somebody in this room that needs a word from God. You've been saying, God, I feel dead. I feel like I'm desperate. I need you to speak something to me. I came to announce the season has shifted. There is a change in the atmosphere. It's not going to be the same old, same old anymore. He said, you're going to begin to see something new begin to happen. I prophesy to you tonight. Get ready. Remember ye not the former things. Neither even consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Thing. Somebody shout a new thing. Behold, I will do a new thing now, 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 not next year, not 10 years from now. He said, I'm doing it now. You are moving in from the one day God will do it and you're moving into the now. I believe we're going to start seeing now miracles. I believe we're going to start seeing people coming in on stretchers, getting up off the stretchers. I believe we're going to see the captives be delivered. I believe we're going to see prisons begin to be delivered. I believe that the Christians are going to be the standard in this world. We need to quit being silent and letting the world dictate to us 
who we can be, what we can say, what we can do. The devil is a liar. I believe there's an awakening that's happening, but I want you to understand when I, uh, I saw that last night, I, I was, of course, if you see something like that, you're troubled. <laughs> Come on. I want to see some faces. You're a little troubled. I, maybe y'all see that all the time. That doesn't happen in my house all the time. <laughs> and so I was a little bit troubled. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, Andrew, when you go to another level, there's another level of resistance that comes against you. He said, you begin to see what you've never seen. I was talking to uh, one of our lead intercessors here, Nancy, today on the phone, and, and I was uh, telling uh, them about, our, uh, about what happened last night, and she pointed out what the Holy Spirit spoke. Well, we've been praying to see what we've never seen before. I said, I'm talking about I want to see miracles. I want to see angels. Since I wrote this book, Breaking the Spirit of Delilah, I've seen a new level of warfare going on. I said, next time I am riding on the blessings of God. I am riding on favor everywhere I turn. I... Come on, don't think you're going to write about something and then you don't face it. And, uh, uh, but, but he said, when you go to another level, you're going to face another level of resistance. See, some of you have been facing another level of resistance, and you didn't even understand what you were facing. You just knew it was tough. You just knew, man, this doesn't feel right. And why am I going? Th why are they talking about me? Come on, have you ever had some people that are supposed to be on your side? And you're thinking, my God, what happened to you? You were my go-to. You were, you... come on. That's why you have God. He said, I'm a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. When mother and father and sister and brother and all those that betray you, all those that people that should lift you up and begin to encourage you, but they're the ones that throw you into a pit, Joseph, come on. They don't like your dream. They don't like that you're going to another level in God. I wish somebody would help me in here. You know whenever God begins to give you dreams and he begins to give you words and he begins to call you to another level you're going to have to face another level of resistance i remember when i was a little boy perry stone preached a message new levels new devils i thought that's neat it rhymes that was when i was a little boy but when i grew up come on somebody then you face the devils and you're thinking i don't want to hear that message in jesus name no you need to hear it because there is a real devil loose but the great news the great news not just the good news but the great news is greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world the good news is that jesus died on the cross and when he said it is finished it was finished the victory's already been won but whenever you go to another level, there's another level of resistance. But I heard him say to prophesy to you, to tell you that God has already made deposits inside of you. You're not waiting for something. He's already put it within you. He said there's deposits in you that are going to come forth out of you that you didn't even know were there. There's a new measure of strength. There's a new measure of anointing. There's a new measure of fire. There's a new measure of favor. I wish somebody would receive it tonight. He said, I know you've been up under opposition, but get ready. You're stopping, stepping out of opposition and you're being elevated to a new position. You're being elevated to a new, I'm going to say it again. You're eleva being elevated to a new position. That is what the opposition has been about. The opposition, opposition, the enemy has been sent to steal, to kill, and destroy. He's not there to play games. See, I, I often think to myself, why as we, are we, the church, playing games? Well, they hurt my feelings. They didn't smile at me the right way. Come on, you're leading the ministry, you hear these things. They didn't hug my neck. I didn't see you. I would never uh, reject you. Come on, we, we got to extend grace to people. 
And we've got to think, we've got to quit being so sensitive. Except to the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. But he said, get ready for new assignments. Get ready for prophetic purpose. Get ready for new mantles. See, your mantle is being tested. The enemy wants you to throw down your mantle. Y'all know what a mantle is? Come on, I know this is VOE and this is uh, Ramp Cleveland. Y'all better know what some mantles are. Y'all better know, uh, y'all been taught better than that. But some people have received new mantles from God and the enemy is testing your mantle. Oh, you say you're gonna be a prophet? Well, prophesy and see what happens. You're gonna live holy and you're gonna see your family come in. You're gonna see that prodigal son or daughter come in. Well, I'm gonna test you. Now they're gonna act more rebellious than ever. Now they're gonna do do this and do that but I'm telling you if you plant your feet and say I know my God is faithful I refuse to move to the left or to the right but I've got I'm going to resist that thing that's resisting me you got to know you got greater power. You've got greater authority. He said to tell you that, that God is releasing new mantles and that your mantle is being tested. He said to tell you God is making room for you. Some of you felt left out. Have you ever felt left out? I want to just be real. Anybody ever felt left out? I I've, I've felt left out. I felt like, God, I'm on the outside looking in. I feel like everybody, uh, uh, you know, you're not supposed to feel like that, but I'm going to be, I'll tell them myself, y'all look spiritual. But I thought, everybody, I, I'm on the outside looking in, and, and why is there never room for me? And God said, in this season, I am making room for you. Some of you, you're going from being fenced in, closed up, shut up, and even shut in. He said, I, those that have been barriered, those that have barriers around them, get ready for the breakout. I said, get ready for the breakout. Get ready for those chains to fall. Get ready for those jail cells to be empty get ready you are coming out of the old and into the new I want you to turn in your Bibles let's go to John John chapter 11 Lord I thank you we are stepping out tonight Mm, I am stepping out. They are stepping out. This church is stepping out. This ministry is stepping out. No more of the old season. Oh God, all the resistance is going to make sense in the end because there is a new a level of favor there is a new level of anointing there is a new level of the miraculous I'm prophesying better than you're helping me tonight there is a new level of the glory that is coming on your life see you got to understand we don't just come into the glory we are carriers of the glory We've, we're called to carry the glory in Walmart See, see, the problem is we, we're praying for revival. God, give us revival, revival. God says you are revival. I'll never forget when the Lord began to stir me to lay hands on somebody in Walmart. I said, they're going to think I'm crazy. You got to look for divine assignments. See, you can't look for just the microphone and the platform and, and, and the trumpet sounding. Here they come. This is the one. No, you've got to start looking and hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit because you're stepping into a new season. See, if you need everything ordered and in place, you need everything just right, you'll miss what God is doing in this hour. But I know there's some people in this room that say, I refuse to miss what God is doing in this moment. This is the finest hour for the church. I know it looks like a political unrest. I know the world looks crazy right now. What better time for the church of the living God to stand up and say, this is our hour. We've got a word for your deliverance. We've got a revelation that's going to set you free. We carry the glory of God. So I want you to turn with me. Let's go to John chapter 11. Very familiar, familiar passage of scripture. And it says this. John chapter 11. Let me get there. I'm telling you all to get there. Let me get there. Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. 
It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sisters sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Now that's important right there because I love the fact that Jesus was not moved by emotions. He was moved by the leading of the Holy Spirit. So when we're having our pity parties, we got to understand. And I just had one a, a couple of weeks ago. I don't know why. Maybe I'm just being real transparent. Don't judge me. But I was having one the other uh, a few weeks ago. And, and I mean, I was, you know, you kind of get that tone going. And God, <laughs> you know, it's that whining tone that I hate when my children get that. <laughs> Juliana, I hate when my children get that tone. And so I was, man, I was doing it in disguise of prayer. It was not really that good of a disguise, but I was trying to disguise it in prayer. And I heard him speak to me and say, Andrew, your pity party does not move me. Well, surely God. He said, you know better than this. Your faith is what moves me. He said, he said to me, he said, Andrew, stop and get rid of that tone, number one. I don't like it. See, he talks like this to me. He does. He talks like, he talks, I know he talks King James to y'all. He talks Andrew to me. And, and he said, uh, uh, get rid of the tone because you're, you're, you're trying to sound pitiful. It's like, it's like when, when I'm talking to one of my kids. I told my kids the other day, <laughs> this is so, see, now I don't know where it gets it. But Gabriel was doing this the other day, and I said, Gabe, he's my five-year-old. I said, Gabe, stop whining. Stop whining. And I said, I hate when you whine. And he said, I'm not whining. <laughs> I said, there it is, right there. I'm not. And I heard myself doing this. And I heard uh, the Holy Spirit speak to me and say, stop it. Your emotions, your pity, your, your circumstances is not what moves me. It's your faith in me that moves me. It's you standing up in the face of adversity saying, I still believe God. I don't care what the circumstances look like. I don't care what it looks like in the natural right now. I believe I am stepping into a new season. See, I'm here on assignment tonight. I'm here to announce to you, don't miss this moment. Don't miss the new season season that you are being elevated to, that you are stepping into, being restricted to an old season. The enemy wants to hold you back into yesterday. He wants to hold you back in hurt. He wants to hold you back in disappointment. He wants to hold you back at what happened to you 10 years ago, 20 years ago when you were five years old, but it's time to get healed. It's time to get delivered and it's time to allow God to turn it on the enemy and take what Satan meant for your evil and turn that thing for your good. I announce tonight there is a turnaround in the room. There is a turnaround. There is a turnaround. Some things are about to completely turn around. Some things are about to complete. It's looked one way. I know how it's looked, but there's about to be a complete turnaround in the name of Jesus. But Jesus, uh, they sent word to him and they said, The one. Now, I love how they do this because they say, The one whom you lovest, the one you really love, that's the one that's sick. And he sent for them. But Jesus, he loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, but he was not led by emotions. And it says in verse 6, And when he heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two more days, still in the same place where he was. Skip on down to verse 11. It says, These things he said, said he, 
And after that he saith unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of his sleep. Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of his sleep. He said, our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of his sleep. See, you're gonna, it's gonna hit your spirit in just a moment. See, he is referring to death as something temporary. See, you're going through something tonight and you thought it was going to last forever. And if you're not going through something tonight, hang on because you'll go through something tomorrow or you'll go through something a year from now. So take this message and hear the word of the Lord. Maybe you just came out of something. Maybe you're going through something or maybe you will go through something because life happens to everybody. It rains on the just and it rains on the unjust. So sometime in your life, seasons come and seasons go. But I want you to know this that Jesus said about Lazarus' death, he said he's only asleep. It's only temporary. He knew this thing was going to pass. And I want to tell somebody tonight, the situation you're dealing with, it's going to pass. It's going to pass. It's only temporary. He said, I know people have said it's over. They're dead. They'll never get up. I want you to know, I went through three years of depression where I barely left my house in three years. Painted uh, black over my window so no light would come in. Wasted away to 130 pounds because I would not eat and I did not leave my house. Unplugged all of my phones. Would not answer my door. I'm just going to testify. You know why? Because I overcome by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of my testimony. So I try to work it into every message I can. But I, I went through this time, and I remember so well, I received a message. It was from one of my relatives, and they began to laugh and say, you know, we just call you dead boy now. And they meant, well, they, they were trying to make light of what was going on, and I understand that. But it hit me because I said, that's what the enemy has pronounced over me. That's what he has said over me. But I'm going to shut some mouth when God brings me out. And when I come out, I'm coming out with a greater anointing. I'm coming out with a greater fire. I'm coming out with a greater word in my mouth. And the devil's going to wish he'd have never touched me. See, you've got to get some determination that you're not staying in an old season, but you are coming out by the blood of Jesus. Some of you right now, you've been in a season, and there are those that have celebrated your funeral. There are those that have said, oh, they'll never come out of this one. They'll never. The enemy is rejoiced. And let me tell you, if you don't think that people partner with the enemy, you've got another thing coming. There's some brothers and sisters that begin to partner with the enemy. They begin to say, they'll never get up from this. There's, they'll never get, it's too late. They've gone too far. Some of you heard that in your life. Maybe it's about your children. Maybe it's about your ministry. Maybe it's about your marriage. I don't know. But I do know that Lord, the Lord sent me here with a word to tell somebody you are being elevated to another level. And the opposition has been against your elevation of your position. But God said, you're going to reign. You're going to reign you're gonna reign you're gonna rule you're gonna reign you've got authority through Jesus and Lazarus was dead by the time that Jesus came now you can read all of this for yourself I don't have time for time's sake tonight but Jesus then shows up now it was a uh, custom to believe that the the, the spirit hang, hung out in the, the the grave for three days brother Perry can t teach you about that another time because I'm not a Jewish theologian I just know what the Perry Stone Bible study Bible says and, and what the Dakes Bible study says. And, and, and so, come on. I, I don't profess to be something I'm not. But I do have a revelation of walking in a new season. I do have a revelation of being set free from the old and walking into the new. But Jesus came, and they believed that the Spirit hung out in the, the tomb for three days. But he waited until the fourth day why because he said I'm going to receive God's going to receive all the glory from this see some of you tonight you feel like it's too late 
See, I remember telling the Lord, it's too late, God. And some of you have been praying that prayer, it's too late. God, I still love you. I remember making excuses for him, saying, God, I still love you. It, it doesn't matter. I still love you. I'm still going to serve you. And that's what we do when we want to make excuses for God. I still, I, I'll still serve you. God says, I don't need you to make excuses for me. I created everything. And when I spoke and said, let there be, there was. And when I released a word into your life, it wasn't so that it could come back void, but it will accomplish where unto it has been sent. Your times are in my hands. It's not too late. See, I want to serve notice to somebody online tonight and say, it's not too late. It is not over. The devil does not get the victory in your life. The devil does not get the victory in your situation hang on because it's the fourth day that's when Jesus showed up and the Bible begins to describe to us uh, uh, let's read it together tonight let's go to to verse um, let's skip on now to verse 38 he comes and he he meets Martha no this is too good we can't skip that See, that's the hardest part of preaching is editing because I could really get up here and read every scripture because I want you to get it so bad. But, but we, got, we, can't, we can't leave this out. So Martha comes and, and she greets Jesus and, and she says to Jesus, if you'd been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Y'all know what I'm talking about? And he said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. See, your faith is about to release a yet. I said, your faith is about to release a yet shall he live. Yet, yet your circumstances are going to change. Yet God is going to do a reversal on what the enemy has pronounced. Yet you're moving into a new season. In fact, I hear the Lord saying seasons are shifting even right now. Some circumstances are coming into alignment with the perfect will of God. Who's this for tonight? He said there is a shift taking place there is a reversal taking place. There is a turnaround that's taking place. And he said, I, I, I've got to read this part because this was so powerful to me. When it says that uh, verse 20, it says, Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But notice this. It says, But Mary sat still in the house. See, we have some people that are so trapped in grief, so trapped in their circumstances, that even when Jesus comes, they're missing it. Yeah, all right. uh, if you study that out, it actually means that she was sitting in a position of grieving. She was so trapped in grief that even when the Son of God comes in on the scene, she remained in her grief. See, some of us tonight, he is here, and we are so trapped in an old season that even when he's calling for us, we remain still in our position of, you don't know how it happened. You don't know what happened in my marriage. You don't know how I prayed for my loved one, and they are still sick, and it reached death. You don't know how this one don't make me step on everybody's toes tonight because we'll go through every situation you don't know how they cheated on me you don't know how they talked about me you don't know how I failed you don't know how I went what I went through I'm sitting here in my grief I don't want to hear what you have to say Jesus my brother's dead how could you do this I saw you heal the sick I've seen you do all these mighty miracles. And when I called for you, you didn't come. See, I know we don't want to amen right there because we, we don't want anybody to know that we, we know how to put a religious smile on our face. How are you doing? Oh, great. God is so good. And inside you're dying. I've been there. 
I know what it's like to get on a platform and minister the word of God. And inside, I'm going, God, I'm broken. God, if you don't do this tonight, I don't know what else. Then nothing else can be done. I'm completely reliant on you. She sat still in the house, and she refused to be moved. And here is the Son of God. At least Martha went out and met him. See, I think there's something to the fact that she was a worshiper that she expected even more for Jesus to come. See, when you're a worshiper and you have that level of intimacy with God, then you're expecting him to come immediately when you call. Come on, do I have any worshipers tonight? You, there's a level of intimacy with God that you're just expecting for that answer to come. I, I mean, I've had times where I've been in, in intercession and in a worship, and I've been calling those things that be not, and I'm just looking at the phone for the situation to change. I'm just looking because I have that much faith. And when it doesn't, I'm a little more sensitive in that area, thanking God, I better go back to my position of grieving. Maybe I didn't hear from God. Mary set still martha the worker we, we we love to talk about how mary's better because she was the worshiper and martha the worker she needed a little more worship she needed to go a little deeper in her walk with god but at least martha ran out to meet him at least she went out and said this is my issue see sometimes we can't conquer what we refuse to confront as long as we put on some religious masks and we talk in cliches to God, see, he knows what we think anyway. He knows what's inside of our heart. So why do we try to play games with him? Why do we try to sound more spiritual and, and act like, Lord, I didn't have that thought. I didn't think, where were you? Why didn't you come through for me? I saw you heal so-and-so. He knew you thought that. You better just repent, just be honest, say, yes, Lord, I'm having an issue tonight. Heal me. Deliver me from this. But Mar Mary sat still. Martha ran out and met him. And she said, if you'd have been here, my brother wouldn't have died. And Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth, believeth in me, shall never die. Believest thou this? Verse 27, she saith unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. And when she had said so, she went away and called Mary her sister secretly, saying, The Master is come and calleth for thee. See, I hear the Lord saying, He's calling for you tonight. He's calling for you. He's calling for you to get up out of your brokenness. He's calling for you to get up out of your pity party. He's calling for you to get up out of your hurt. He's calling for you to get up out of your disappointment. He is calling for you to get up from everything they said about you. He's calling you to get up from everything you've been through. He's calling you to get up from that bad marriage. He's calling on you to get up from that bankruptcy. He's calling you to get up from all that rejection. He said the master is calling calling for you Mary he's calling for you and as soon as she heard that she arose quickly and came unto him now I want to skip on down for time's sake tonight because they they came with a word and their word was even now he said do you believe and she said even now See, I came with a word on my way here. I had two topics rolling through my spirit, and I heard the Holy Spirit speak to me. And he said, no, Andrew, you've got to go and say, I know what you've been through, but prophesy. They are about to see an even now breakthrough. You're about to see an even now miracle. I know what the doctor said, but you're about to have an even now. I know what your spouse said, but you're about to have an even now. I know what the economy he says but you're about to have an even now he said will you believe though it looks impossible though it seems dead will you believe and the Bible says that that Mary and Martha bring him to the tomb I love this part because it says that when Jesus saw her weeping, verse 33, and the Jews also weeping which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled and said, where have you laid him? 
in my Bible, I have that double underline because I will never forget when I was trapped in depression for three years, God released this word to me. And he said, Andrew, take me to the place where you laid down. Take me to the place where you said it's over. Take me to the place where you stopped believing I was going to rescue you. Take me to the place where you buried it in the tomb. He said, where did you lay down your faith? And I want to ask some of you tonight, where is that place? Was it a marriage? Was it a situation? Was it a church hurt? What was it that made you lay down your faith that God was going to do what he said he would do? But God sent a wild man from Chattanooga to tell you tonight it is not too late it is not over he said take me to the place because your death is no match for who I am and the word says Jesus therefore groaning in himself cometh to the grave it was a cave and a stone lay upon it now, how many know we're entering into the Easter season? See, the enemy wants to make sure you don't come up out of the grave. He wants to make sure you don't come up out of depression. He wants to make sure you don't come up out of your health battle. He wants to make sure you don't come up out of bankruptcy. He wants to make sure you don't may have a rebound. But I'm telling you, the Lord says, get ready to rebound. Get ready to bounce back. Get ready to get back up. Get ready tonight. He said, it was a cave and the stone lay upon it. Jesus said, take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Verse 40, Jesus saith unto her, said I not unto thee. See, I love, he begins to remind her of the word that he spoke. See, some of you need to get back out the words that God has promised you. You need to begin to war with your prophecies. That's what Paul told Timothy. You need to begin to war with your prophecies. The Bible says that God says, put me in remembrance. You need to begin to put God in remembrance of the promises that he made you. Because not one word will return to God void. He is not a man that he should. I can preach all day on this if you don't get it. He says, every word will come to pass. Not one word. Not one word. Not one one word will fall to the ground God's word will come forth and he said did I not say and I hear the Lord saying that to you tonight who's this for he's telling you tonight did I not say what is it see I, I get very activated I get dramatic with the Lord and I begin to say I put my name if you look through my Bible you're gonna see my name in lots of places all right Andrew exclamation point I have to add that exclamation point on there because I want God to know that I believe him I want God to know that he's no respecter of persons what he does for one he will do for all I want God to know that I believe everything he has spoken see some of you tonight you have words that have been decades ago but God is saying pull it back up and begin to war and say God if you said it it's not too late I know it stinks I know the grave has been laid on it I know the stone has been rolled over it it looks impossible but if you did it for Mary and Martha, if you did it for Lazarus, you will do it for me. It's not too late. It's not too late. It's not too late. He said, did I not say? Did I not say? And it says, said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, somebody believe tonight, that thou shouldest see the glory of God, you're about to see the glory of God in your situation. Oh, hear me online. You're about to see the glory of God in your situation. You're about to see the glory of God, OCI. You're about to see the glory of God. You are about to see the glory of God. You are about to see the glory of God it had to be 
It had to. It had to have a stone rolled in front of it. Jesus could have come at the very start when he first got sick, but he said, no, I'm doing something greater. I'm going to receive a greater glory from it. I'm going to receive something greater. See, some of you feel like God has forgotten about you. He has not forgotten about you. He has not forgotten about his promise. What he spoke to you, I just keep hearing the Holy Spirit say, what he spoke to you long ago, this is a prophetic word for somebody, uh, what he spoke to you long ago, Kathy, I, I just hear the Holy Spirit saying, what he spoke to you long ago, it's not over. He said, it's coming forth. There's many in this room that God says to you, what I spoke to you long ago, I know it looks impossible because it's too late in the natural. But we don't serve a natural God, thank you, Lord. We serve a supernatural God. We serve a God that times are in his hands. He is not restricted to time. He exists outside of time. He just uses time as a vehicle to usher in his plan and his purpose. Are y'all hearing me tonight? He said, he said, did I not say to you, uh, it's not too late. Basically, it's what he's saying. I'm paraphrasing there. But thou should have seen the glory of God. Verse 41. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hearest me. See, God hears your prayers. Your prayers intercessors have not been in vain your prayers have not gone unheard it has not been in vain some of you have labored in prayer you have laid down your life to intercede and God wants you to know it has not been in vain he said Jesus lifted up his eyes to say father I thank thee that thou hast heard me and I know that thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. He said, get ready. There's about to be some witnesses to your breakthrough. There's about to be some witnesses of you coming out into your new season. And he said, verse 43, and when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice. I love that part. I, I stop there every time because I'm loud and he was loud. Hallelujah. We're two loud brothers together. And when he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Verse 44, and he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face bound with a napkin. Jesus saith unto them, loose him and let him go. See, I have in my Bible right there a date that the Lord gave this to me and set me free from three years of depression, and I've never gone back since. See, I have a date right here written in my Bible that I remember when Jesus said, Andrew, be loose and set free. See, some of you came in here, and you've been oppressed by the enemy, and the devil's been whispering lies to you, saying you'll never get up from this. Oh, there's no way. There's a stone in front of it now there's impossibility how are you ever going to come up out of this how are you ever they're rejoicing at your funeral but I came to serve notice on the devil it doesn't matter what hell has said it doesn't matter what they have said it only matters what God has said and he sent me as one that he said, Andrew, I want you to go to Ramp Cleveland at OCI, and I want you to tell them, to roll away the stone. And he said, then Lazarus came forth, and you were coming forth, but he came forth, and the word describes that he was bound hand and foot. I don't know if you know anything about how that they would bury the dead back then, but they would wrap them almost like a mummy, head and foot, but the, you can't. See, my mind, I'm thinking of, I'm not going to jump off the stage, but I, I, I might. But I, I can see him just 
you know, you're restricted if you're bound hand and foot. And some of you have been set free and you're full of life, but you're still bound to an old season. But he said, Andrew, I'm sending you on assignment. I know you thought I came to preach. I know you thought I came so I could sell some books. The devil is a liar. I came on assignment tonight because God says to tell you, be loose. See, Jesus told those standing by the tomb, loose him and let him go. Tonight, you're going to start a new, mo a new momentum. He said, now you're going to move. He said, you're going to run and not be weary. He said, all those restrictions, all those hindrances, all those things that have been binding you up, those hurts from the past, what they said and what this one said and what this one did and how your spouse betrayed and how this happened and oh, come on, we can really break it down all those things that have been hindering you from moving God said you're being loosed from that old season I just in the spirit right now I see grave clothes being removed from you I see in the spirit God is saying I am loosing you from labels that life tried to put on you from that old season you'll always be broke you'll always be depressed you'll always have being lack you'll never be healed come on somebody he sent me on assignment and he said Andrew I want you to go and as they come forth he said I want you to tell them that they those grave clothes are being removed he said you won't have the hint of the old season anymore I'm telling you today he is removing the scent from an old season he is removing the hint uh, some of you, you you still have the stink of yesterday I'm not smelling you in the natural. That, I, that's not natural. This is talking in the spirit realm. He, he said, you're still carrying the stink and you think uh, uh, nobody sees it, nobody smells it because I have a smile on my face. I know what that's like. See, I'm not preaching to you. I'm preaching with you because I've lived this. And I know what it's like for Jesus to call me out of an old season. But what happens here is that you begin to walk in a new season, but you're still dressed for your old season. God's called you into a new season, but because you're facing such resistance, you're still walking, bound, hand and foot, barely able to go. But God said, I called you to run. I didn't call you to barely move. He said, I've called you to take some ground. There's some new territory that's going to be taken in this house. There's some new territory that's going to be taken in your life. He said, but we've got to remove those grave clothes. See, I came tonight because I heard the Spirit of the Lord, and he said, Andrew, there's some people there tonight that I'm sending. And it's not by coincidence that you're here. It's by divine assignment. He said, I'm sending those. And he said, they're trying to move. See, I believe Lazarus, when the life came back into him, he probably was trying to get himself free, but could not. But then Jesus said, I've assigned some people there that's about to loose you. See, I believe this house is about to be a house of deliverance. There's some things that the enemy has tried to attach to you that's not your identity that's not your label that's not what God says about you he says, you're the head and not the tail. You're above only and not beneath. You're the lender and not the borrower. You're highly favored of God and man. Come on, you have the mind of Christ. You're an overcomer by the blood of the lamb, by the word of your testimony. You're more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. You know how I know all these scriptures? Because I was bound to an old season and I had to fight my way out. I had to get the word and begin to war with the word. That's why I can stand on this platform and tell you I've lived every moment of it. And I know it works. But the enemy wants to keep you bound. Even though life came back into you, he wants to keep you dressed in an old season. Remember, I said earlier on, the Holy Spirit prophesied that a new mantle was coming upon you. And he said, there's a new mantle of anointing. There's a new mantle of grace coming upon you. But the enemy wants you in grave clothes. He wants you bound to that old thing. Even though you've come forth out of the tomb, you still look like you're in the tomb. You still... Act like you're in the tomb. 
you're still wearing grave clothes. And in, by Martha's description, they stink now. God is saying, I'm making of you a new creation. You will fulfill your assignment upon the earth. The enemy tried his best shot and he lost. He said he tried his best shot and he lost. The fact that there is still breath in your body means that God is loosing you from every label that the enemy has tried to attach to you. See, this isn't a message. This is a prophetic decree. God is saying that you are being loosed from the hurt. You are being loosed from what they did. You're being loosed from what they said. You are being loosed from even how you felt yourself. See, it's one thing when people do something to you, but it's another when you're responsible. And you think, I've got to stay here. I made my bed, now I've got to lay in it. God said, I didn't call you to lay in a bed of shame. In fact, I heard the Lord speak and say, I'm getting ready to release the double in your life. I'm getting ready to remove the shame. And I'm about to release a mantle of double, a bound mantle of double. Now, we know what goes on here. I'm going back to the double. Remind me. But I, I want you to go on. What, ha what happens here is they loosed him and let him go. They stripped him of those grave clothes. And we know further on in Scripture in the next chapter that the Word says that many believed on Jesus because of Jesus and Lazarus. They came to see Lazarus testimony your testimony is going to testify of the glory of God the new season you are walking into is about to testify that God is still a restorer that God is a deliverer that God will come through that God never fails what he promised he will do that's your testimony but Sunday night I was preaching in Alabama and it was so funny because all the way down there it's about I preached in Chattanooga Sunday morning drove to Hamilton Sunday night and it's about a three-hour drive and I was driving and the whole time I was down there uh, driving in the car I was praying and I heard the Holy Spirit speak to me and say start prophesying double and I said okay Lord he said, begin to pro prophesy double anointing, double favor, double opportunities, double blessing, double open doors, double opportunity. Prophesy the double, the double, the double. I said, Lord, I don't want to get gimmicky. I, I stay away from gimmickies because you hear so much gimmickies that, gimmick things that manipulate and I just don't get into all that. So I was like, Lord, is this really you? Because I want to be obedient if it's you. And he said, Andrew, I want to take you to the word in Isaiah 43. Uh, he said, remember not the former things, neither consider the old. Uh, I read it to you earlier. Behold, I do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. He said, I am doing a new thing. And he said, we just crossed over into spring and I'm not being gimmicky right here, but there is a, a something that happened when we crossed over. I know the weather outside does not look like it. And some of your situations right now does not look like you crossed over into anything new because you're still dealing with the same old, same old. He said, don't look at the situation. Don't look at what the natural tells you. I came with a word from the Spirit of God that it is now springing forth. It is now springing forth. It it is now springing forth. Behold, I do a new thing. He said, now it's time to know it. It's time to know it. It's time to claim it. It's time to perceive and know in your spirit that he's doing a new thing. A new thing. You haven't been this way before, but you are crossing over. You are crossing over into something new, Ramp OCI. You are crossing over into something new. Don't wish for an old season. I just felt fire on that right there. As good as prior seasons has been, you know, I can say this because one time I was thinking in my life, man, that was the greatest time of my life. I would give anything to be, go back to that season because it's been a lot of warfare since then. And the Lord spoke to me and said, better is the end of the thing than the beginning thereof. He said, behold, I do a new thing. And Andrew, I am good at my job. I said, I know, Lord. He said, no, you got to get it. 
I'm good at my job. I don't leave it in the past. You haven't seen anything yet. He said, quit living for an old season. See, sometimes people begin to get trapped in an old season, and they think to themselves, well, when I was back in high school, man, that was the greatest time of my life. That was 30 years ago. Let it go. Let it go. You're not prom queen anymore. You can put up the crown. It's over. But God has something new for you. He has not abandoned you. He said, I will do a new thing. And it's greater than anything you've seen before. You haven't seen the half of it yet. He said, your greatest season is coming up ahead. You are stepping in. Come on, I started this service by declaring you are stepping into something new. He said, those grave clothes are being removed. And don't you know when Lazarus came forth out of those grave clothes and his testimony became uh, just a widespread thing and people began to believe on Jesus it was the greatest season he didn't think oh I wish I could go back before I died no he was saying I'm moving into my greatest hour I'm moving into my greatest season and that's what I'm telling you tonight for your shame God is giving you double I said, for your shame, there's an exchange that is taking place. For your shame, you weren't meant to live in shame. That's why I get upset when people say shame on you. That's prophesying shame on someone. God said, I didn't call to shame them. I called to remove the shame and give them double. I called them to rejoice in their portion. He said, the, the, the rejoicing, that is your portion. I know you've cried lots of tears, but he said that was seed for your next season. Now get ready for a bount bountiful harvest. Get ready for the joy that comes in the morning. Get ready. See, if I was T.D. Jakes, I'd say, get ready, get ready, get ready. Why? Because God is doing something new now. Now. It's not one day. It's not, well, when the economy gets fixed, I'll believe God to bless me. The economy is probably never going to get fixed. But the kingdom economy is fixed. We don't live according to man's economy. We live according to God's economy. And he said, listen, I did not fall off my throne. I knew what is going to take place before it ever happens. I'm the God that knows the ending from the beginning. God is not reacting to the situation you're going through. He's already made a way of escape. I hear him say tonight, Andrew, your assignment is to walk in that room. I've called some people forth that are in this service tonight and watching by live stream. I've called them forth out of the tomb, but they're still bound. You know, one of the things I love is working with new believers that come to Christ because number one they're just so on fire for Jesus they're just so completely in love with him I love that but they're still sometimes bound to some things and I hate religion that begins to try to crucify them I'll never forget I'm fixing clothes musicians you can come on up I'll, I'll never forget when I first started pastoring we had a girl that had gotten saved from the world and and she had come uh, given her life to Jesus and I'll never forget she uh, she didn't she had the Holy Spirit hadn't dealt with her yet on her dress but sometimes we think we're the Holy Spirit the job's taken he's, he's good at it but I'll never forget I had this uh, um, Pentecostal mother that I love her dearly so don't judge her but she, anyway she's gone home to be with the Lord but she sat on the front row and I'll never forget this girl coming down and she had a a mini skirt on which was not appropriate for church but she didn't know we got to give people some grace to let the Holy Spirit to begin to deal with them and, and, and I'll never forget the look on that lady's face on the front row of disdain and I remember she came to me afterwards and she's like we can't have that we, we somebody call her down and tell her she needs a longer skirt and I said not you and she said, why? I said, because of the spirit behind it. The Holy Spirit will raise up some mother that will say, honey, let's go, let's go look for you a skirt. Or let's, let, you know, do it in a way that the Holy Spirit can use her to minister and she'll receive that. Rather than defeating somebody that just gave their life to the Lord. 
Church, we've got to be sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. See, there's some people, there's some Lazaruses that are coming out of old seasons, but they've still got grave clothes on. We've got to be patient and say, I'll be the one. You're saying loose them, I'll, I'll, I'll unstrap them from that past season. I'll unstrap them from the past of what they're wearing because I believe that tonight you're walking in a new season. Come on, every head bowed, every eye closed tonight. Lord, I thank you. This is the new season. I thank you there's some ones in this room and some ones watching by live stream that you felt you felt like there was more but life was telling you this is it this is all God has for you the devil's a liar God said there's so much more for you I hear him saying tonight He wants to touch the place in your life that stinks. He wants you to take him to that place where you were broken, where you said it's over. He said, take me to that place. The stink does not scare me. The grave clothes you're wearing, it does not scare me. But tonight is your night for freedom. Tonight is your night to be set free from the old. Because God is calling you into the new. All over this room and all over live stream come on I want you to stand to your feet all over this room I remember where I was when God said Andrew today you're set free today you're loosed and I believe that March 21st 2023 is the day for you you've been bound for too long you've been trapped for too long but tonight is that night he said I'm healing the hurt we certainly hope you enjoyed this service and we love coming into your homes and wherever you are every single week. Please subscribe and tell all of your friends about us so they can subscribe too because we love bringing the gospel to you. Speaking of the gospel, it's because of you that we can take services like this around the world into places where people don't have a church to attend. So thank you for your contributions and your weekly giving. And if you haven't given this week, pray and ask the Holy Spirit what you can do to help spread the gospel. And look to the screens and you'll find the text to give information so that you can be a part of what God is doing through us to spread the gospel throughout the world. God bless you. We love you. We'll see you next week.